Good morning. If you can hear me, give me an amen. All right, all right. Thank you. It's good to have everybody here this morning. Welcome to New Beginnings Church here in Jameson, Pennsylvania. I want to welcome you, whether you're live in the parking lot or here online or watching online. If you are watching online or you're here, we're excited, privileged, and so glad to be able to worship God with you this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're, if you're in your car, remember you can tune to 87.7 to listen right through your car. If you're watching online, we ask that you start a watch party, share this, like, comment, let us know that you're there. Reminder again that church facilities are closed before, during, and after the service. But we are getting closer to getting back into the building. Amen. As we continue to pray and, and do our part, I believe that soon enough we're going to be worshiping together in the building. Maybe out here too. Who knows what God has in store. But we are excited that we are not being hindered from worshiping God as a church family. We had to get, we had to get a little creative. We've got to do things a little differently. But we're going to do what we have to do. Instead of complaining about what we can't do, we're going to do what we can do. And we're going to worship God together. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's open in a word of prayer, and then we're going to turn things over to Pastor Christy and worship the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for an amazing morning. Lord, it's amazing not because of, of the weather. It's amazing not because of the temperature. It's amazing because of you. God, I can say it's an amazing day because when I woke up this morning and I opened my eyes, I have a confidence that my sins, a confidence that my sins are forgiven. I have a confidence that, that my name is, is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Heaven is where I'm going. And it's not a confidence just for me, but it's a confidence that every man, woman, and child can have if they surrender their life and accept Christ as Savior. And so, God, I thank you for this day where we get to, to worship, we get to, to pro proclaim the good news of Jesus in person, online, right here in Jamison, right, and all around the world. God, I pray that the word would go forth and accomplish that which has been purposed to do. God, we lift up our community to you. We lift up those that are that are dealing, Lord God, with, 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 with illness, those that are dealing with financial concerns, those that are on the front lines in so many ways. God, I pray for families that are having to adjust to a, a life a little differently now. God, there's so many right now, Father that have needs, too many to, to, to list. But God, you're the God that hears every cry of every heart. And God, I pray if there's anyone, anyone at all within the sound of my voice that is feeling overwhelmed or unsure, or uncertain, if fear is set in or, or, or concern is, is a part of their, their daily thought process, I pray today, God, that they would cry out to you, the God who hears and answers prayer, and they would put their trust in you, and you, God, would move and minister on their behalf and in their situation. God, I pray now as we worship you, God, that we would transform this, this, this area that we're in right now from a parking lot into a, a, a sanctuary where your presence is, is moving and ministering, God, and beyond the boundaries of this property, Father, moved by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just close yourself in with God. Get ready to praise him. Clap your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. And let's sing together. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Today we're celebrating the cross and what Jesus has done for us. And I'm so thankful that the blood that was spilt that day has never lost its power. It's just as effective to remove sin. It's just as effective to remove to heal my body from sickness because the blood will never lose its power. Amen? Amen.
Your suffering for our peace. 
thank you for taking your sin and casting it as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. Thank you, Lord, for freedom from guilt and shame. Thank you, Lord, for making us your children. Thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We're thankful, God, that when we called on your name, you answered and you rescued us from the darkness and the sin that was humbling us in bondage. And you delivered us into the kingdom of your dear son, into your marvelous light. And we are free.
Chris, if you could just lead us just in that one word chorus again, just Jesus. Jesus. And if you're here, again, on, on site or, or watching online, we have many that have joined us watching online. It doesn't matter where you are. My, the Bible teaches that, that God is everywhere all the time. So he's right here on these steps. He's right there in your car. He's right there in your living room or your bedroom or wherever it is you're tuning in online. He's right there with you in Pennsylvania. And we've got people tuning in from New York and Delaware and Maryland. We've got people tuning in from, from so many different places. And it doesn't matter where you are right now, Jesus is there and can be there right by your side. So if you've got a need this morning, if there's something that you know what you wish you could tell somebody about that's been, been, been a little overwhelming, been a little, it 
that's been keeping you up at night and your brain just can't shut down. Could be concerning this, this, this season we're in of, 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 of quarantine or it could be something totally separate. The answer starts with Jesus. That name that's above every other name. That name that, 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 that opens up the very throne room of heaven to us. The Bible said that when we pray in Jesus' name, because of Jesus we have access right to the very throne room of God. And so whatever it is right now, just begin to pray. Just begin to cry out to God. And if you don't know how to pray, if the words escape you, just simply cry out, Jesus, Jesus. say that name, everything that, that is encompassed in that name is available to us. If you need peace today, it's found in Jesus. And we're going to get into that in the, in the word that God's given me today. If you need hope today, it's found in Jesus. And say it, say it like a prayer. Not like so many people in our world when someone they stub their toe, they cry out that they cry out the name, but they say it in, 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 with anger, or they say it out of pain or discomfort, or, or they even use it as a, as, as a as a curse word. But let's say it today the way it's supposed to be said, as as, as with reverence and with awe and with respect and with gratitude. Jesus. Jesus. death could not hold Jesus. The grave could not keep Jesus down. The tomb could not keep him contained. Even out of the, the weight of our sins which were cast upon him as he hung on that cross could not keep Jesus from doing that which you promised he would do. And that is to pay the price for our sins. And that is to bring freedom and forgiveness. That is to bring healing and hope. God 
God, I pray Jesus would reveal himself in, in a fresh and a new way to anyone that's hearing this right now. That someone who may be watching this and saying, I don't have a hope, that right now they would sense hope coming into their, wherever they're at, into their living room, their bedroom, their car, their kitchen, wherever they're sitting right now, that the hope would, that the person of Jesus would begin to flood that place. That there are those, I believe, that are watching right now that are so filled with anxiety. But I pray peace would begin to permeate peace would begin to fill the place where they are. Your presence would begin to fill that place and bring peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Listen, we're going to do something. I want to get a picture with Ollie. Stay here, Pastor Christie. I want to get a picture with Ollie. So if you're watching online, smile, because you're going to be in this picture too. And if you're in your car, you know, pull your mask down and smile. Uh, but we're going to turn around this way. We're going to get a selfie with them. So let's see. Oh, got to flip that around. There we go. Tim, uh, I got Tim and Joshua in there. Again, if you're watching online, you're with us right now. Hey. We, we didn't get those people over there. Let's turn that way a little bit there. And then one more on this side. We want to make sure we get this side over here. There we go. All right, beautiful. Wow, you guys have beautiful smiles. We got the proof right there. So it's good to have everybody here this morning. Listen, I, 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 I love this kind of weather. I love when I can get outside and, 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 and be outside. I love, I, love, I love preaching the word. I love being in God's presence. You know, and, and here's the thing, when I, when I think about preaching the Word of God, I, I kind of feel like, how many, how many remember or know the, the, the Publisher's Clearinghouse? Hump your horn if you know what I'm talking about. All right. So Publisher's Clearinghouse, you know, every year, that, I remember as a kid growing up, they would have the commercials, and they say, you could be next. And they show the commercial where they show up at someone's house and they got a big check and they got a bunch of balloons and they're, they're coming up to the house like we're ready to change someone's life. We're getting ready to change someone's future because they've got a check and they've got some balloons and they've got some good news. And I, as, I was, as I was thinking about this this morning, I said, man, God, I feel like, I feel like the publisher's clearinghouse guy because every time I get a chance to preach the word of God, I feel like that man. I may not have a big check or some balloons, but I've got something that I can give people that can change their life. We've got something that we, that, and I, let me rephrase that, we've got something that can change people's future. It can change their present. It can change their eternity. Now listen, it may not be able to change their past, but it can give them forgiveness from their past. It can give them freedom from the guilt of their past. And so every time you go somewhere, I don't want you to walk into work. I don't want you to walk into school. I don't want you to walk into the supermarket like some average shopper. I want you to go every place that you go with the thought in your head that you are like the publishing clearinghouse people walking in, carrying within you something that can transform and change a life. Amen. Amen. And we've got to think that way. We've got to think that way constantly because the reality is Christ in us is always in us. He never leaves us. We don't, we don't take him out and, and put him on a shelf when we go to work. We don't leave him in a drawer when we go to run our errands. If you know Christ is Savior, he's in there and he's always in there. So everywhere you go, you are carrying with you something that is life-saving and life changing. And people need to know that. And they're only going to know it as you let it out, as you let that information out. Want to remind you that as we leave today, don't, don't drive off until you're dismissed. Again, we want to have a safe dismissal at the end of our time here um, in, in, in the parking lot. Um, and as you leave, again, we're going to go out the main entrance here. But if you have need of groceries, for, for groceries personally or you know someone or if you have 
Um, we'd like we have some some products from Giant, some bread and, and things like that. If anything like that you need and or want for yourself or someone, pull into the side parking lot. We'll get that to you and for you. If you would like prayer, we want to pray for you. One of the things that God, Jesus did when he came was he prayed for people. And so we don't want to just do some songs and, 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 and some preaching and leave out one of the most important parts, I believe, that, that the church is supposed to do. That's praying one for another. So if you need prayer, we also want to encourage you as, we, as you as your row is dismissed, if you need or want prayer, again, pull into one of the slots on the side here and we will someone will come over, we'll be praying with you, groceries, whatever the case might be. We want to continue to do everything God has called us to do. Just because there's a there's there's some stipulations in place of what people can and can't do doesn't mean we stop doing what God has called us to do. And so Again, that's a reminder about that also. As you leave, there'll be an opportunity to give as you drive out. If you're watching online or you choose to give online, you can do that as well. I believe, Tim, we can get that graphic up on the screen of how you can give online. And then reminder again that every Sunday through Friday, 6 p.m., Pastor Christy and I are live on Facebook and on Instagram and on YouTube. We took a couple of days off this past week uh, getting my parents moved. Um, and not only did we get them moved, but we got them here. They're right in the front row. They are now officially Pennsylvanians. So welcome to, welcome to the neighborhood. So, so anyway, we are. Who's ready for God's word? Who's, who's ready to have communion as a family? All right. If anyone has, we have communion is being served. If anyone has not been served communion yet, if you did not receive it yet, do me a real quick favor, turn your wipers on so I can see and we can get someone to you. If you have not been served communion yet, just give me a quick flip of your wipers. Anyone at all? You got them all, kid. Thank you, Kira. Uh, right there in the back. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Anyway, we're going to celebrate communion here at the end of our time together. So everybody in house, except for them, has, has been served. They will be served. If you're watching online, get your communion together. Whatever elements you're going to have, uh, doesn't matter. Crackers and grape juice, uh, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's got some grape stuff in it and some bread. I don't care what you do. It's not necessarily about the what, that, the, the items. It's about remembering the what, and it's the what Jesus did. Amen. My title of my message this morning is, What Are You Bringing? What are you bringing? There's an old saying, and it says, April showers bring May flowers. And man, have we had a few April showers already. So I'm expecting an explosion of, of some May flowers to, to be coming up. And then I remember as a kid that learning the addition to that saying, and some of you may know this, and it says, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? And the answer is pilgrims. Think about it, you'll get it. May flowers bring pilgrims. And if you're a new dad who's listening, if you write that one down, that's a classic dad joke. And you'll guarantee to get an eye roll and a groan from your kids every single time you say it, especially if you repeat it over and over to their friends. But back to my message, it's entitled, What Are You Bringing? Whenever my family and I would go on road trips, especially when the older kids were little, before we had DVD players in our minivans and, and everyone had their own personal entertainment device, we would do things in the car to pass the time. How many of you ever went on a road trip with your family and you, and you played games in the car to pass the time? Maybe you, maybe you looked for license plates. You know, if it was a long trip, you try to find the license plates from as many different states as you could. Or maybe you play, um, my, my wife's family used to play a game as they were driving down the road. And every time they drove by, uh, somebody saw an American flag, they would say, I think it was God bless America. So every time they saw a flag, they'd say, God bless America. And then they would keep track of how many flags each person saw and whoever had the most would win. So we used to play another game and it was called, it was called the, um, the idea was, excuse me, it was called, I'm going on a picnic. 
And the idea of the game, we used to play this with our family, we used to pay, play this on youth group trips when we were traveling. We might have even have done it here with the, with the teenagers here. The idea was you start listing everything you would bring on this picnic you were going on as a group. And, and the thing that you would do was, the thing that made it hard was, as you went around the vehicle, everyone had to remember everyone else's items. So for instance, you'd start the game, say I went first, and you play with the alphabet. I would go first, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing apples. The next person would say, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing apples and bananas. The third person would say, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing apples, bananas, and cherries. And then, so you keep going round and round through the alphabet, and you have to remember everything that was said before you, and if you messed up, you were out of the game. Now the game could get a little silly, because as you went through the alphabet, sometimes people would say ridiculous things, just because they wanted to be difficult, but sometimes because they didn't know what else to say. So you might, somebody might say, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing a dinosaur, they had the letter D. Or I'm going on a picnic, and if they had the letter X, you know, some limited choices there, they might say, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing my X-rays. And you'd play the game and you'd go around and around that way, and, and, and it could be fun and, be, and everybody would start laughing, trying to remember what was said. But the idea of the game, again, was you're going on a picnic and you're bringing something. If you've ever been invited to someone's house, you know, it's often said good etiquette is if you're invited to someone's house, if you're going over to someone's home, you don't go empty handed. You bring something. It doesn't matter what it is, you bring something with you for, for, the, for, the, for the homeowners, for the person who invited you, for your hosts. And I want you to know something. This morning, my message has two parts, and it ties in with the title, what, what are you bringing? And it is number one, we're going to talk about real quick for the next few moments. When Jesus came, what did he bring? Because remember how I said, you know, etiquette is if you go visit someone, if you go to someone's house, you bring something with you. And when Jesus left heaven, and we sang that song this morning, it says, you came from heaven to earth. When Jesus came, Jesus came and he brought something with him. He did not come empty handed. And then the second part of my message is this morning is, we we're going to talk about what Jesus has brought, but we're also going to talk about what we need to bring. Because we've got a job to do as well. We can't just sit back and say, Jesus brought everything. What do we need to bring? So the first thing I want to do real quick this morning, again, is remind everyone that, that today is Communion Sunday. And at the end of the service, we're going to celebrate communion. And again, you've got your, your elements and uh, girls, we've had a vehicle just pull in, so if you could take care of getting them communion over to that side, that we greatly appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who helps out on Sunday mornings to, to do this. Uh, let me tell you, time out one second. Let me just say this real quick. Nothing to do with my sermon. I just want to share something really neat with all of you. This past week, Pastor Christie was on a Zoom call with about 20 other worship leaders and, and music people from, from 20, uh, 20, 25 churches around our district. And they were all talking about worship and how they're doing worship and how they're handling worship right now. And everyone's sharing their stories. And so Pastor Christy came to her turn and she says, oh, we're doing drive-in church. And like, oh, that's neat. And I think there was only maybe one or two of them that were doing drive-in church. Most of them are just streaming online. And she says, we're doing drive-in church and we're streaming the service as well. And out of 20 or 25 churches that were a part of this, this conference call, we are the only church that was in there that was doing drive-in church and streaming the service. And, 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 and they, were, they were blown away. They're like, wait a minute, you're, you're streaming the drive-in service? She's like, yeah. And they're like, how? Don't you need a computer? She's like, yeah, we, we, we got Tim on the computer out there. He's running the show. Give it up for Tim. And they're like, and they're like, and, and, and what about, what, if, what are you doing for sound? She's like, well, we got a sound system set up and we've got an FM transmitter. And they're like, and, 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 then, and then how are you streaming the service? Are you taking the camera outside? And we're like, absolutely, as you can see, every week we brought the camera outside. And they said, what about the weather? 
and she said, we, we cover the camera, we cover the speakers, but we feel that we don't want to miss any opportunity to get the gospel out to as many people as possible. So, I just want to say, I, I say all that to say real quick, I want to say thank you to everyone that has helped out in doing this. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and coming and your prayers. Listen, we could do drive-in church and it could be me preaching to my family in our van. And you know what? That would be really discouraging. But I want to say thank you to every one of you that have come regularly and faithfully come out, you know, as you can to be here, to, to worship together, to, to, to praise God together. And, and, and we're making a difference and we are getting ready for whatever it is God has next for New Beginnings Church. Amen? Amen. So anyway, we're going to celebrate communion together, but I, I just wanted to share that with you. I just, just thought it was so neat when she told me that, that we're the only ones. And there were some big churches that were in that conference call. That hundreds, thousands of people in, serve, in churches, and they're like, no, we're just streaming, we're doing this, but thank you again. But the reason we can celebrate communion this morning is because we were brought back into fellowship with God when Jesus died for our sins and rose again. See, when Jesus gave his life on the cross, and as I said before, he, he didn't, it wasn't taken from him, he gave it, that enabled us to once again have a relationship with God the Father. And so real quick this morning, what I want to do in the next few moments, I want to talk to you about seven things that Jesus came to bring. Remember I said, when you go visit someone, you bring something with you, you don't go empty-handed. When Jesus, as we said in the song again, came from heaven to earth, he didn't come without bringing some amazing things for every single person that is hearing my voice right now. It doesn't matter if you're in the parking lot, sitting in a home within, in the area, watching online live, or tuning in later. When Jesus came, he brought some amazing things with him for every man, woman, and child. So we're going to talk about seven things real quick that Jesus came to bring. Number one, Jesus came to bring life, but not just life, life to the fullest, abundant life. Jesus came to bring abundant life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should have life and life everlasting. Jesus came to give everlasting, abundant, full life. Listen, how many of you know you can live life and you can live an abundant life? full life and there's a big difference you can live life and and you can you can you can sleep in, 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 a, in a box and you can eat you know bread and crackers and drink water and you can be living you can be alive but that's not really living I want to live the kind of life that, 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 that is a blessing to people. I want to live the kind of life that, 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 that isn't just getting by every day, but is making a difference in the world that I'm living in. And Jesus came to bring and give that kind of life. John 6.51 says this, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever and this bread which I will offer and, and this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my body Jesus gave his body his shed his blood so that the world can have not just any life but live forever there's a big difference in having Jesus as Savior and living life with him and living life on your own just eking by trying to make it and I want you to know that Jesus came to give life number two Jesus another thing Jesus came uh, to bring and brought with him he brought light John chapter 12 verse 46 says I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. When Jesus came, he came to be light. The Bible says that, 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 that when, 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 you light a, when you light a candle, you don't hide it, you, you put it where it can be seen, and that's what Jesus came to do, to let his light shine so that no one has to remain in darkness anymore. 
What does darkness mean? Darkness could mean uh, being in a dark place because of fear. You could be in a dark place because of worry. You could be in a dark place because of addiction. You could be in a dark place because the way you had thought your life was gonna play out hasn't happened. And that's caused you to just be, you know, to, to be upset, to be sad, to be angry, to be anxious. And you can be in a dark place because of a lot of different things. But Jesus said, I have come so that you no longer have to remain in the dark. The things that, that worry you don't have to be work, don't have to worry you the way they did before or at all. The things that overwhelm you no longer have to overwhelm you. The things that have caused you to live it with a cloud over your head and just a dark feeling in your in your mind and in your heart no longer have to have power over you. Jesus came to bring light into your dark situation, into your life, into your family, and into your world. Amen. Amen. Number three, Jesus came to bring victory. Jesus, I mean, this is, this is amazing. When you get into the Word and read about it, this, this is not exhaustive. I just picked a few things this morning to encourage you with. But I want you to know that when Jesus came, He came to bring and He brought victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58 says, But thank God He gave us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers, because you have victory, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord because you're on the winning team. For you know, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. When you're on the winning team, it changes, when, excuse me, when you know, when you understand, when you recognize that you're on the winning team, it changes things in you. It changes the way you walk. It changes the way you talk. It changes how you hold your head up. It changes how you think. It changes how you act when you know that you are on the winning team. Last night, my kids and I were watching a a documentary on ESPN. And it was about a basketball team from the, from, the, from the 80s and in the early 90s called the Bad Boys. And they were the basketball team from Detroit, the Pistons. And they, had, they, 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 they got a reputation for playing a, a rough and physical game. And, 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 and people would say that they're, they're terrible, they're, they're, they don't play the game right, they were saying all kinds of negative things about them. But then that team, playing their style, ends up winning the championship. And one of the guys says, you know, at that point, we're the world champions. We're holding the trophy. We're the best there is. And at that point, he says, it didn't matter what anybody else had to say about us. We were the winners, the victors, the champions. And I want you to know something right now. Look, I'm not condoning acting the way they did. I'm not condoning talking the way they did. The point is, because when they had the trophy and they were the winners, the world champions, at that point, they were on top of the world in their minds and no one else's opinion mattered. I want you to know today that because of Jesus, you have the victory and you need to walk as one who is on the winning side. Get your, amen. Get your head up. Get your, get your mind right. Let your, your speech reflect that. No more talk like you're defeated, like you're less than less, like you're the lowest of the low. You're a king's kid, and if you're not a king's kid, you can be a king's kid before we're done today and walk around telling the world, my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, my father sits on a throne, and my, 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 my Jesus is alive, and I will never, ever be moved or shaken because I am on the winning team. Amen? Amen. Next thing Jesus brought, Jesus brought hope. And man, if there's anything this world needs, not just today, but listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 50 this year. And in all my years, from, from, from when I was a little boy to, to now, the world has never gone through a year where people didn't need hope. 
It's not just now. It's not just when there's a major problem like storms or, or I remember growing up in New York, living through the blackouts in the 70s in New York. I remember being in, in New York City the days after 9-11. I remember being in, the day, in, in New York City soon after Hurricane Sandy. And I, so I've seen, I've seen things at their worst in, in my years. But I'm telling you, people need hope every day, not just when there's a crisis. And, and I appreciate so many talking about the, the role of the church right now. But I want you to know that the role of the church has never changed and can never change. We are to bring hope because that's what Jesus brought. Amen. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're, we're in the home stretch here. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 says this. Uh, through 18. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Listen, every day our bodies get a little older. Maybe you can't do today what you did yesterday, or two years ago, or four years ago, or ten years ago. But don't give up, because though our bodies may be getting older, look, this is just a shell. This is just a shell, a temporary home. Our spirits are being renewed every day. So when you wake up in the morning, listen, uh, you may have an ache here, and you may have a little stiffness there, but understand that though your body may not feel like it once did, your spirit is being renewed every day, and that should put a smile on your face. That should put a, a, a message of hope in your mouth, that as you go out into your day, you know, don't walk around and everybody, you see, how you doing? Oh, it hurts here. Oh, it's sore there. Oh, this. Oh, my problem, that. Go out and say, you know what? Things aren't perfect, but I've got a hope, and that hope is found in a person named Jesus. He goes on to say, for our present troubles are small, are small. If you know Jesus as your Savior, I don't care what you're dealing with. It is a small thing compared to the greatness of what is to come. It is a small thing. And he also says this, and it won't last very long. Listen, you, maybe, you, maybe you had some aches in me. Listen, I, 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 on and off for the last month, and I said this to you guys a couple of weeks ago, I've had... It, on one side of my back, just every a couple, every, a couple mornings a week, waking up with stiffness and tightness, and I can't figure out why. It's not like I did anything. It's not like I, I twisted, or I, I just can't figure out why. But let me tell you this: you know, even if, even if I had that, and I'm not claiming this, I'm, I'm claim, I pray every day healing, and my, it's feeling great today, and I thank God for that. But even if I had that issue from now until the day I die. From the moment I leave this world, I'm getting some, I'm getting a new body, and there'll be no more back pain, and that'll be my reality for eternity, for eternity. So even though I may have an issue now, it's small and won't last long. It says, but they produce a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So don't look at the troubles you can see now. Rather, fix your gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Man, when you know that there's, a, there's something better coming, when you know there's a, there's a change that's on its way, when you know that your current situation, no matter how bad it is, is gonna get better. You know what that gives you? That puts a hope in your heart. And that hope came from the person of Jesus Christ because he gave us a hope for eternity. Amen. What else did Jesus bring? Jesus brought joy. Luke 2.10 says, the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. What was the good news? The good news was Jesus was born in a main, in, 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 in a, in a, in a, and laid in a manger. The good news is Jesus. He brings joy. The next thing that Jesus brought, man, I, listen, I hope if you're not writing these down, that's okay. Go back and rewatch this. Write these down. You need to know everything Jesus brought for you, and you need to live it out in your life. He brought peace, and he brings peace. Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 14, says, For Christ himself has brought peace to us. 
He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. He broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Look, if God could break down a wall of hostility between the Jew and the Gentile, he can do the same in any situation where you need peace. Maybe it's with a family member. Maybe there's someone you haven't spoken to in years. Maybe it's a coworker. I don't know what it is that's causing you not to have peace today, but it says Christ himself brought peace to us and we can walk in peace. I'm believing that, 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 that starting today, some of you are gonna start to see peace begin to flow through your family. So you're gonna begin to see peace begin to flow through your situation. Why? Because I'm encouraging you and reminding you that Jesus brought peace when he came. And he didn't bring it for me, he brought it for us. And when I say us, I mean every, again, man, woman, and child. Not just those in the parking lot, not just those watching online, but anyone that can hear this, whether you accepted Christ as Savior or not, Jesus brought peace, and it can be yours when you surrender and give your life to Christ. And then the last one I want to talk about this morning, the last thing that Jesus brought, he brought healing. He brought healing. Uh, uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 and you know that God anointed excuse me and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power then Jesus went around doing good doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him Healing. Listen, I, real quick, I want to look at this for one second. Jesus had the Holy Spirit in power. Christians, you can have that same Holy Spirit and power in you that Jesus had. And when he had, with that power, it says he went around doing good. Doing good can, can, can be feeding 5,000 people. Doing good can be us giving groceries to those that are in need. Doing good can be taking a neighbor shopping or, or, or some, some good deed. We can do a lot of good things. But I want you to know that the church was never meant to just do good things for people and help them. The church was also meant to bring healing and to those who are oppressed and sick. So all the good we do as the church, let's never forget that praying for the sick, believing for healing, believing for people to be set free from anything that oppresses them is something that Jesus brought and came and did and we need to be doing as well. If we leave it just to good things like food and clothing, we're missing the point. The Salvation Army can give people food. The Red Cross can give people clothing. But it's the church of Jesus Christ that can give them the answer for the question of where to spend, where they're going to spend eternity. Because we can give them Jesus Christ. And that, that is the most important thing the church can give the world. So again, real quick, what did Jesus bring? Uh, what did he come to bring? Life, light, victory, hope, joy, peace, and healing. And summing it all, all that up, what Jesus came to bring? Jesus came to bring people a new beginning. To give people a new chapter. To give people, let me, better yet, to give people a new story. And here's the thing about Jesus. He didn't come to give it to them just for one day. See, if I give, if you leave here today and you take a bag of groceries, if you leave here today and you take some of the, the things that we have over there in, in, in the way of groceries, that'll last you for a day or two or three. It'll last for, for a, a, a short season. But Jesus didn't come just to impact lives for a day or even a week. Jesus came so that lives could be changed for eternity. He came so that lives could be changed every day, every day, every day for eternity. Now let me, now let me, let me talk real quick. Remember I said there's two things I wanted to talk to you about this morning. I want to talk to you about what did Jesus bring and then I want to talk about what do we, what do we bring. The good news is there's no second list. Some of you are like, man, he took a long time on the stuff Jesus brought. And he hasn't even got to the stuff we, we're supposed to bring. We're going to be here a while. I may run over there and get a bagel and some cookies to, for the rest of this sermon. No need to. Relax. We're literally at the end. 
Because the reality is, the, thing, the question of what is it that we're supposed to bring is the same thing Jesus brought. There's no second list. There's no extra items that, are, that I'm adding to the list. Go back and look at the things Jesus brought. And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if he's your Lord and Savior, then you know what you're supposed to be bringing to the world? Everything Jesus brought, because Jesus lives inside of you. We don't get a separate list. We don't get a separate, we don't get a separate list. We don't get a separate, a separate list of items that we've got to figure out. No, what Jesus did, we do. How Jesus loved, we're supposed to love. How Jesus served, we're supposed to serve. So the, the, the list for what we're supposed to do is, do what Jesus did. So I want to encourage you, be a person who brings life where there is death. Be a person who brings light where there is darkness. Be a person who walks in victory and points others to how they can have victory in their life. Be the kind of individual who gives hope where people are hopeless. Be a man, be a woman who in, in, in the midst of, 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 of sadness can bring, can bring a sense of joy. Be a man or a woman who, who, who sows peace in, peace in situations that have no peace. And last but not least, as far as this list is concerned for today, and it's not exhaustive, we need to be the church and we need to be people who bring healing. We need to be people who bring healing to those that are hurting. You know, there's a saying I've heard it said to me all the time, you know, hurt people hurt people. You ever heard that saying? Hurt people hurt people. And what it means is if, if someone's been wounded and they're injured, they're gonna lash out. They're gonna bring hurt and pain to those around them. I wanna make, I wanna modify that this morning. And I wanna put it this way. Forgiven people, forgive people. Healed people, pray so people might be healed. People who experience peace, bring peace. People who know joy, bring joy. People who know life, bring life. And if you're listening today, again, in, on, in live here or online, if you, find, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're no longer a hurt person, or at least you should be. The healing process should have begun. And for many of you, you should be far along that journey and that road of healing in your life. So the time to, of hiding behind statements like hurt people, hurt people, needs to end. The church needs to rise up and be what we are, forgiven people. So let's be forgiving. The church needs to rise up and we need to be people that, are, that have been healed. So let's pray and believe for healing. People talk about what is the church going to look like when we move on from this moment in time? What are we going to look like in the next month, two months, six months? I don't have the answer to that. But one thing I do know is we may be meeting in buildings or in parking lots. Maybe we meet in, 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 in a hybrid of both, and we've talked about that. But we have service inside, but those that may not be comfortable yet can still sit outside and listen and, and, and be a part of. We don't know what that, some of that stuff's going to look like yet. But one thing I do know about the church moving forward, we've got to do a better job of living out Jesus. We've got to do a better job of living out Jesus 24-7, 365. We've got to do a better job of letting Jesus shine through us and work through us. And stop hiding behind excuses. Stop hiding behind reasons why we can't. Start letting the power of the Holy Spirit help us to be salt and light and sources of hope and healing in a world that's broken and hurting. Before we go into communion this morning, at New Beginnings, we, what we have is what we call open communion. What that means is anyone can partake in communion with us at any time, 
The only requirement we have is not membership or regular attendance. It's just that you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior because what the communion does is it's celebrating what he's done for us. The bread representing his body that was broken. The, the cup representing his blood that was shed. And we're celebrating what's been done for us. And so we, we want to celebrate as a family together. But before we do that, maybe there's some that, that need to become a part of the family. Maybe you're watching here or online and you don't, you don't know for sure that heaven is where you're going to spend eternity. The way you're living life right now, Jesus is not Savior and Lord. But you want to make a change today. You want to, you want to begin to live the kind of life that God intended you to live when he sent Jesus a life in relationship with him. A life where the guilt of your past is no longer an issue. A life where, where your future in heaven is secure. And that happens when we, when we confess that we're a sinner. When we confess that, that Jesus died and rose from the grave to pay for our sins. And when we ask him to come into our hearts as individuals to be our Savior and Lord. And so if you're here today and, and, and you're sitting in one of the cars and, or maybe someone is sitting in the car with you, you're not sure that heaven's where you're going, but you want to be. We're going to pray a prayer here in just a moment. I want you to repeat it after me. If you're watching online, the same thing goes for you. And if you're watching online and you pray this prayer, leave us a comment. Send us a message. If you're sitting in the parking lot and you or someone in your car prays this prayer of, of surrender and rededication to the Lord, don't just drive away. But before you leave, just pull into one of these side spots so we can know and we can pray with you before you go. But again, if you want to make sure that you're going to heaven and, and, and be able to partake of communion with us as part of the family of God, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, Thank you for sending Jesus to give his life and shed his blood as a sacrifice. I know I'm a sinner and I've done things wrong. But I know that he came that I might have forgiveness of that. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life to forgive me of my sins to wash me, to be my savior, and to be my Lord. I surrender my life to you. I give it to you that I might be everything you were, a source of hope and joy and victory and so much more to the people around me because I will have that inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, if you prayed that prayer online, leave us a comment, drop us a message. If you're here and you prayed that prayer, again, don't leave, pull over, just give us a chance to just connect just for a couple of moments with you. But at this time, we're gonna celebrate communion together. So if you've got your elements, you, begin, you can begin to open those up and prepare them. This bread and this cup, remind us of what Jesus did when he came. Hopefully every time you take them, you remember all that, that he paid for and provided. And I, and I list some of those things today. But it also needs, should, needs and should serve as a reminder to each of us of our job and our responsibility. See, Jesus said when, when he gave this to them, he talked to the disciples, he says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. so we need to be living the same kind of life he did and doing the same things he did. But the bread, it represents his body that was broken. And as we get ready to take this bread, if you're sitting and, or listening and you've got a physical need in your body, I don't care what it is, an ingrown, an ingrown toenail to, to, to severe back pain to migraines, 
a report from the doctor that you just got in the last couple of weeks that they don't have an answer for, the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. And this bread represents his body that was beaten, that we might have wholeness in our bodies. So as we get ready to take this, as you're holding it in your hand, I want you to begin to pray about that thing. Begin to pray about that thing. And don't just tell God, hey God, it's so bad, it's so bad, I want that prayer to be God. It, it is what it is, but you're able to. You're able to bring healing in my body because of this, what this bread represents. You're able to bring wholeness and health because of what this bread represents. Begin to pray a prayer of faith right where you are in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for healings that have been reported online and, 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 from, and from so many, God, over the last couple of weeks. You're moving. But God, you're not done. I pray that healing, God, would be part of, of the testimonies we get out of this today, Father. God, thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat of the bread together. reminds us of the and what many would consider the more important thing because healing in this body is temporary but what this cup represents is eternal it's the blood that was shed that you and I might have eternal life and forgiveness and have the ability and the, excuse me, the opportunity to spend eternity in heaven with him and if you prayed that prayer and we prayed a few minutes ago I want to say welcome to the family I want to say welcome to the family. We may not see each other until heaven, but that's okay. Welcome to the family. God, I thank you for this cup that was represents the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sin. It was a debt we could not pay, but Jesus came to pay it. Once and for all, for every man, woman, and child. Thank you for this cup, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink of the cup together. I've asked Alexa as we wrap things up this morning to just lead us in a in a in a in a, in a, in a chorus, and then we'll, we'll pray and dismiss. And she's just going to continue to play us out today. But I want to encourage you. world, all that Jesus has brought to you. Bring to the world all that Jesus has brought to you. Because at the end of the day, those are the things that are eternal and matter. Alexa, if you would, let's sing this chorus together, and then we'll dismiss in just a moment.
Father, I thank you so much that your word says that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. And for what he did, Jesus was given a name above every other name. And I thank you that today, when we call on the name of Jesus, we can receive all that Jesus brought for us to receive. Father, give us a good rest of this day. Let us live in light of the sacrifice that your son made so that we might live in freedom, in hope, and in joy. Bless us as we go, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.